for sure. We so. don't know what it's going to look like for the Lakers, but let's give it a shot, if you will. BK, right. you're going to go first. You're going to give us your closing lineup that you think we'll see. God. Maybe be the best. Jeez. Um, you know, and the one that Andy's going to give, I think, is, is, is also one that I agree. But I'm actually starting to think that there could be a little bit of a mix and match here thing going, you know, with, with obviously the big three. You have Westbrook mm -hmm. at the point, and you have, um, you know, LeBron and AD. I think Trevor Ariza is penciled in there right now because of his defensive ability in the front court. They don't have a lot of that. Uh, and so if AD's playing center, you're going to need Ariza there as well. The big question is at the two spot. And I think Wayne Ellington is a guy who could be there, depending on the lineup, depending on the score, depending on all these other things, because of his ability to spread the floor and create space for people. But that's predicated on whether or not Ellington holds up well enough defensively. I think a lot of what Vogel, Frank Vogel could do is just spread it, around, uh, spread it around. Some nights it could be Kent Bazemore. Some nights you could see Kendrick Nunn, I think, closing with Russell Westbrook. Um, I think every, you, know, you could even see Carmelo Anthony Yep. on the floor depending on the right matchups I think there could very well be a lot of mixing and matching you know who's playing well at any given it depends time what you need. and who's playing defense yep got it what about you closing uh, I, I think what Brian had out there four fifths of what I'm expecting but I would sub out Wayne Ellington and put in Kent Bazemore mm. and I think the Lakers are going to need that versatility that Baysmore brings um, defensively a lot of what you would want in Trevor Ariza it gives them a really switchable lineup. Assuming Baysmore's three-point shooting, even if it's not what it was last season, which was a career high 41%, if it can stay in the high 30s, mm -hmm. I think the upside of all the different options that Baysmore gives you, he's an experienced guy. He's played with really smart players, yep. particularly most recently with the Warriors. That's the guy that I think is more likely than Ellington. Again, just he can give you more options, more upside. I think that's the lineup they want. Yeah. I think that if that turned out to be the five at the end of games, that would be ideally what, if I had to guess, Rob Palenka and Frank Vogel are thinking today would be the best configuration they have. Yeah, competitiveness too. Bays has taken on a lot of challenges against against LeBron yeah. over the years, which has been fun to watch. Let's dive in a little bit more to the big three when you think about him. LeBron, Anthony Davis, and Russell Westbrook. Russ said it himself. There's going to be ups and downs. What are you anticipating? Maybe how long it's going to take for them to gel? What do you think that's going to look like? I mean, I, I think they're going to have to figure out different ways for everybody to contribute when they don't have the ball. And, and Russ has said before that he's done that over the course of his career. But if you look at his usage numbers, um, the data might say otherwise. I mean, Russ has the ball in his hands a lot. LeBron has the ball in his hands a lot. Anthony Davis will have the ball in his hands a lot. All three of them deserve to have the ball in their hands. But they're going to have to find ways that they can work as a trio off each other, even getting the ball to each other, where they can still have utility when two of them, or in particular, Russ and LeBron, don't have it. Like, there's, it's going to be some tinkering. It's going to yeah. be really interesting to time. watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I think this is where, you know, a lot of the, 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 the free agent moves that they've made are going to be really important. Which guys pan out? Which lineup combinations uh, work to unlock and let them do the things that they do really well, uh, emphasize the stuff that Russ can bring to this team without highlighting the stuff that he's more limited in? Again, the spacing, the outside shooting, and things like that. But one of the things I think does work Whenever you add a third player to this, there's always a the concern about egos and mm -hmm. is there enough? Are there enough basketball? I don't worry about any of that. Yeah. I, I don't think that's that's not the problem. It is a 100% basketball issue. How do you make these three very particular, very talented players work together uh, in a way that that maximizes everything? But if I had to choose between an ego problem and a basketball problem, you take the basketball problem. Every time, and you figure that out, I think, and you know, as opposed to the you know the, the chemistry issues that could come up. I mean, talk about egos. They fit two Cam brothers on the same podcast I know. at the same time. And some would say you it's guys not figured working. It out. <laughs> no, <laughs> no one says that. Look, Shaq and Kobe <laughs> won titles. They didn't get along. It's yeah. fine. It's Which just, one's Shaq? Which one's Kobe? I I I don't know. <laughs> I, Shaq. I think you think Andy Shaq. Yeah. 